Uwe Muga, uh, can you tell us briefly what you, what you do? Well, I'm the chair of the Translation Localization Management Program here in beautiful Monterey. Mm -hmm. And I teach translation, um, well, it's primarily translation, computer-assisted translation and uh, terminology management. Okay, this is, is at master's level? Right? Yes, these okay. are all, okay. all the courses we offer in the program are master's level courses. Okay. Um, and you're running this master's, it, it's a new master's? Yes, the, um, the TLM, Translation Localization Management Program, is fairly new. It's, uh, it's three years old um, and it's the youngest part of our, of our offering. We've, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the Monterey Institute has, has offered translation degrees for a long time, but the TLM program is fairly new. And how's it going? Very well. Um, mm -hmm. We are very pleased. It's, um, um, Student numbers are growing. Um, uh, in the in, initially, we only got um, students, or primarily students, who were not entirely happy with the other programs. Yeah. But now it's becoming a, a program of choice, right. and that's a good thing. And relations with with industry? Of oh, very. Of I mean, the 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 program. What it was created in response to industry demand. Yeah. So. Um, we have very strong relationships with companies in the, in the Silicon Valley. As a matter of fact, many of our instructors are full-time uh, professionals. To give an example, um, Yuri Chernusko is a senior program manager at Adobe. Mm -hmm. um, he teaches software localization. Um, Teresa Marshall is um, a localization program manager at Salesforce, um, and she teaches localization as a profession. And these are just two examples. Okay of um, industry, senior industry professionals teaching our courses. And by the way, both, almost four out of five adjunct instructors are Monterey Institute graduates. Okay. How about the employment of graduates? Um, is going very well. Um, according to the latest statistics, 70%, um, no, it's actually, it's now close to 80% of our graduates have find employment, okay. either have employment at the time they graduate or within a couple of months. Yeah. So um, our, I think it's safe to say that our graduates are in high demand. Okay, and you, you have job fairs here? That, that yes, you know. and that's something I'm very happy about. Jeff Wood does an excellent job um, in attracting large companies from Silicon Valley and from all over the United States. We've had 100 companies participate in the latest uh, job or career fair here in Monterey. Okay. How did you get to where you are now? Uh, <laughs> did you start off wanting to work in localization? What were you doing when you were 23 or 24? When I was 23, I just started, I had just started my, uh, my um, studies in Germany. Um, and my goal at that time was to become a film critic. Mm. Um, of course. And, and yes, and I was, uh, I was actually uh, an, apply, uh, an English linguistics American studies major, yeah. and um, I, I completed my my BA equivalent in Germany and went to the University of Oregon to earn a master's in telecommunication and film, and then returned to Germany to work for an um, the only integrated film distributor, film producer, and uh, owner of movie theaters in Germany, um, mm -hmm. but. After a, a short period of time, I realized that all media was fall, false consciousness, and I stopped watching movies. I got rid of my TV, um, and during that phase, I discovered a job offering on a billboard. They were looking for a, an in-house translator. For, uh, for it was a, a small computer company, mm -hmm. and, I, and that's that started my translation career. You weren't trained as a translator. Not well. You, well, I, I had some academic training, literary yeah, yeah. translation. Yeah. But um, if I said I was trained, I'd be lying. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and you weren't trained in localization, or that Not didn't at all. exist. Not at, at all. At that was that was the early nineties. Okay. So yeah. um, all the training I got was on the job. Um, yep. And I realized after doing that for a number of years that, that indeed I needed, I wanted additional training. Sure. And that, that's what brought me to the uh, Monterey Institute. So you came back to, to the I States, back, to Monterey? Yes, uh, and um, I was actually a teaching assistant in the first 
in the first CAT computer assisted translation course. Um, okay. And uh, so I, at the time. So you were teaching here? Um, as a teacher, as a teacher, right, okay. a graduate right, teaching right. assistant. Okay. Um, I was a regular student. Okay. Um, I finished my professional's exam after the first year, got ATA certified after the first year. And so um, I was very fortunate because my, during my second year, um, the school allowed me, they waived another, a number of requirements, and that allowed me to take industry internships. So I, okay. while I was still here, I, I um, had internships with IBM, Lucent Technology, okay. Um, some microsystems, and those were eye-opening experiences. So, so that integration with industry started with your experience here? Yes, and, but that was my basically my own initiative, and I, okay. I did get a lot of help from Jeff Wood from the yeah. career office. Okay. Um, then did you stay in the States, or you went back to Germany? No, I had to go back. Um, mm. Now we're talking 1998, and, and in those days, there was a, a very small number of, of H-1B visas, and uh, it was just poor timing. Um, both at the time I was working for some microsystems, I was a terminologist, and both they and I wanted to stay, but there was simply no visa, so I had to go cool. back. Um, and uh, for a number of years, I worked as a, a consultant and project manager. So Localization and you then came back to the states. Yes. For, uh, to work for JD Edwards, um, right? Okay, yeah. and that was so. Uh, you've been through all the big names. <laughs> well, well you know, a few. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you're teaching here. You're teaching um, computer assisted translation terminology management. Uh, okay, so um, what? Do you have to get across to students about the electronic tools we have available, about tra translation memories in particular, I suppose? Well, I'm, I have an agenda, okay. and um, my agenda is, my philosophy is that um, you need to, you need every, every single translation job belongs in a translation memory system. Because okay, not just for technical translation, not just for... Well, that's, primary, that's our focus. Uh, we, we, our program is geared towards training technical translators, uh, project managers, software localizers. Okay. So, um, you know, in, the, in industry still today, there is a, um, a notion that only highly repetitive projects, uh, large projects, uh, should be processed in a, in a translation memory, but um, my philosophy is that, that every single project belongs in a translation memory because otherwise you really can't um, ensure quality mm -hmm. for one thing. So if you, don't, if you don't use a glossary, there is no way of ensuring consistency within and especially across documents. So if you, are, if you work in a team and in any project um, if you work in a, in a commercial environment, any, there's no standalone project. Even if it's a small project, it's connected to other projects, bigger projects. It's part of a launch, part of a, um, uh, it's connected to a product. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be consistent stylistically, terminolo terminologically. And there is no way that you can make sure that, you are, that your uh, translations are consistent with other translations if you don't use a translation memory product. So you're talking about the, the translation memory and the pre-translation terminological work, the preparation of the glossary, yes. the phraseology as well, I suppose. Well, um, that is, there's still some, some gray area. Yeah. Um, but it, my students, as, part, as the first step, well, it's not the first step, but one of the preparatory steps is creating a, a project-specific glossary. So the glossary is 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 a mandatory part, and as a matter of fact, uh, we uh, we we do include standards such mm -hmm. as the ASTM F twenty five seventy five standard, um, which requires terminology work. Okay. Um, we also we also use J twenty four fifty translation quality metric and things of that nature. That's that's a big part. So we take we really in the te technology courses, we really teach process. Good, okay. 
How about controlled writing? Is that part of the same deal or is that something similar? Well, that's an interesting question and that's actually one of um, the areas that I'm particularly interested in. Unfortunately, in the context of our current program, we're not teaching authoring. Mm -hmm. So while, for instance, in, in CAT2, when we talk about um, machine translation and, and how you can enable machine translation, we talk about controlled, controlled authoring, but we do not, we, uh, currently, we do not offer any courses in controlled writing. Okay. What about in the industry it, it itself? Is, is controlled authoring the, the way forward, do you think? Well, um, I think it is. I personally, I've created a whole website, that's, that's uh, that demonstrates that controlled English or controlled German or controlled French um, really is an enabling technology for machine translation. So my site is, you can you, can, you push a button and the entire site is translated on the fly into comprehensible whatever, Chinese, Arabic, whatever. Um, but I would say that uh, the industry, in, in the industry it's, it's still hotly debated um, whether this is an efficient approach because yeah. large companies have huge repositories of existing text mm -hmm. and translations and so um, tossing all of that overboard yeah. is yeah. is a lot to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What about the the rebirth of machine translation of database machine translation? Is that conflicting with the controlled authorship approach? Or not at all. Yeah, not at all. As a matter of fact, um, statistical or or um, text based machine translation relies on large repositories of training material. Mm -hmm. um, and so proponents of, uh, of, of, of this approach really understand the connection between high quality source text and high quality okay. um, machine translated output. Um, and this is a very successful strategy. Unfortunately, it's also a very expensive strategy. So currently we only see large companies like Microsoft and Google um, and a few others, Symantec, um, uh, employ this approach. There is another alternative approach using rules-based machine okay. translation, which is has been around for a long time yes. and and is is fairly inexpensive. And, um, and unfortunately, at this point in time, all of the uh, statistical machine translation gets all the attention, and so yeah. a lot of people yeah. think, oh, the machine translation is not for me. You know, if, if you're a small or medium-sized company. Um, they don't hear, they don't get to hear any success stories about rules-based machine translation. Yeah, yeah. And for, that's very unfortunate, I think. What tools do you teach in the, in the Masters? Um, well, we teach a wide range of tools from, um, in CAT 1, Computer Assisted Translation 1, it's, it's uh, regular, you know, uh, it's uh, database, bit-driven, uh, translation memory, so the uh, regular translation memories in, in CAT 2, we talk about lesser known um, approaches to translation memory technology such as corpus based um, and reference documents based um, um, translation memories. We also teach um, the difference between statistical rules based okay. direct uh, machine translation and then of course we have our software localization tools um, courses where we talk about tools that allow you to um, localize a software product. Okay. When you talk about corpus-based approaches, you're not talking about corpus linguistics or, or, or well, concordancing or these. these well, of these are tools. these are very similar tools. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, basically there's only one tool, um, and that's um, uh, the tool that's uh, developed by Multicorpora, which is a, is a corpus-based approach. So, yeah. okay, so you have you have a corpus. Um, and that's a very interesting approach because this, and that's another myth about uh, mm -hmm. translation memories. Uh, one of the myths is, well, a translation memory basically breaks up your document. And so whenever you get a match, you never see where this match is coming from. Well, that's not true for, for corpus-based mm -hmm. uh, yeah. tools because it, the corpus, it's not, the, the text is not 
uh, chunked. It's, it's the entire corpus is intact. The document remains intact. So if you care about um, context, if you want to know where is my match coming from, this is a very interesting approach. It's okay. also a very expensive approach. Um, Labor intensive. Well, targeting. no, the tool is expensive. Okay. The tool is expensive. You're, do you see yourself as a practitioner, teacher, industry person these days? You're not an academic, you've no... I see myself as an evangelist. Okay, that's, that's in between <laughs> everything. All right. um, I'm, a, I'm a practitioner, I have a, a management mm. position in a, in a large yeah. uh, translation agency and um, I teach obviously, mm. um, but I see myself primarily as an evangelist. Are you looking for any help in any way from academic research? Is there something that academic researchers could help industry with? In yes, this definitely. Um, I mentioned the importance of, of terminology management and, and only recently in Germany, a couple months ago, um, the, the TECOM, German Association of, of Technical Communicators, published a large study on return, return on investment mm -hmm. on uh, uh, terminology work and, and that's something that's, I'd like to see more research of that nature that on how to make money? On how, on how terminology work pays off. All right. Okay. Because uh, it's, it's still a hard, it's a tough sell. Yeah. It's a tough sell yeah. to, to uh, agencies and, and any company engaged in, in uh, localization. And, and that's why it's also a tough sell to students. Because they, yeah. they say it's not part of, of, of a job description. You know, why? This is difficult. This is hard. Why are? Why do we have to learn this? Yeah. And so, if there were, if there were more demand, you know, first, if if the in, if captains of the industry were convinced, you now if if I had the numbers to prove yes, this makes a lot of financial sense, okay. um, then there would be demand, and then it would be a lot easier to sell our terminology program to <laughs> our students. Okay, but Thank you very, very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.